Deep in the Viridian Forest, a baby Pichu unable to discharge electricity and shunned by its herd is captured by a trainer. Looking to surpass Lieutenant Surge's powerful Raichu, the trainer puts Pichu through vigorous training. The Pichu is eventually able to evolve into a Pikachu and experiences true happiness for the first time. The feeling that someone is wishing for Pikachu's success gave him some much needed confidence, but it's short lived as Pikachu starts to hit a wall as its past trauma of its inability to discharge electricity holds it back. The trainer, more and more frustrated, resorts to worse and worse punishments until he finally abandons the Pikachu. Scared, Hungry and lonely, the Pikachu tries to return to its original family, but the scent of humans has forever scarred it. It seems Pikachu has no place in this world. And that's where one of our main protagonists in this story, Red, comes in. Spare yourself from any spoilers and go read the manga right now. It's called Pokemon Festival of Champions and I put the link in the description. But if you're like me and need a little more convincing on manga, keep watching. Just keep in mind that there will be spoilers ahead for my favorite arc of the series. This fan manga, otherwise known as a doujin, and no I'm not talking about those kind of doujin, easily has some of the best character development I've ever seen in any fictional story. The story follows our three main protagonists, Red, Green, and Blue, and their tournament run of the Indigo League. More specifically, the Festival of Champions. It also touches on many aspects of different Pokemon lore. For example, Green's Raticate, yes, the famous Raticate that many fans have theorized died along the way, is actually canon in this universe and leads to many long lasting character arcs. As a kid, I remember Green's Raticate being a creepypasta and being kind of scared of it. Like, shit, did I really kill his Raticate? <gasps> now, Raticate's death isn't just thrown there for fun, it serves as an important story implication. It actually leads to Green's jaded personality shift, and most importantly, all of Green's Pokemon are fundamentally affected affected by it. Eevee, who was especially close to the Raticate, is so caught up in its grief and mourning that it can't bear to battle anymore, leaving Green to essentially give away his Eevee to Blue, saying that he has no interest in a Pokemon who won't fight. So Blue, one of Green's childhood friends, ends up receiving this basically mentally unstable Eevee and has to find some sort of way to help it overcome its trauma. Blue, however, doesn't just get the Eevee and help it process its trauma, leading to an easy ending. No, Blue also has her own trauma towards Pokemon. She's been bit by them before. She's afraid to even touch Pokemon. This leads Eevee to spiral into even greater depression. Blue realizes that she needs to change something within herself and asks Haunter to use Dream Eater and Nightmare to share dreams with Eevee and understand the root of her trauma together. By looking through Eevee's memories, Blue is able to fully grasp her perspective and connect on a deeper level with Eevee, gaining its complete trust. Sitting around the campfire under the stars later that night, Red and Blue reminisce on Green's Raticate and the amazing battles they had. As dawn approaches, the group can feel Raticate's soul in their heart as they share fond memories. The sun rises and Eevee evolves into an Espeon, shedding her past trauma and loss and turning it into new found psychic power. God damn. I mean, this whole panel was like, I, I was crying. I'm just be honest. I was crying, right? I'm, I'm crying the manliest tears. I think what makes this moment so impactful for me is the fact that it uses in-game video game mechanics from Pokemon and incorporates it into the story in a really cool way, right? The way that Eevee evolves into Espeon in the video games is through having a really high friendship and evolving during the day. So after this whole night experience Blue has with Eevee, getting closer to Eevee on an emotional level, then waking up to the next day seeing Eevee evolve into an Espeon, it's like, oh, oh my god, it's, it's perfection. I've never seen such good Pokemon. Pokemon storytelling before. Yes, the Pokemon feel like real life living people almost. I mean, the characterization that the author gives them is actually insane. I've never felt so connected to creatures before, to Pokemon. So to really round it out, I mean, this manga has everything if you're a Pokemon fan. It has amazing fight sequences, it has amazing tear-jerking moments, and just really well-rounded characters that breathe life into the Pokemon franchise like the anime and official manga honestly don't. I could tell that the person who wrote this is a true Pokemon fan just with how they treat all of the characters and the various interactions between them. It really feels like an official part of the Pokemon world. So uh, that's kind of the video. I just 
just wanted to show off this manga. It's so good. Before ending the video, I just want to give a quick shout out to Ninjaistic Ninja for the MMV in the background. It's so well animated. It's actually what got me to start reading the manga in the first place. So again, highly recommend you watch that video. It's going to be linked down below and you read the manga. And lastly, if you like manga, you should check out my Chainsaw Man video where I made a video game based off the manga Chainsaw Man. Super good. I'm actually planning on making another video game based off the Death Note anime slash manga. So uh, subscribe and keep your eyes peeled for that. Anyway, see y'all later.